Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to talk about in this video is NAT and firewalls and why NAT is not a firewall. So <clears throat> because of the way devices are converged, I think sometimes this is a, uh, a confusing topic. Like, uh, take a Ubiquiti Edge Router, for example, right? So you can do NAT, and you can do your uh, your NAT, but then the same ports that you're NATing have to be allowed through the firewall. If you don't understand anything about what I just said, let's back up. Let's talk about what NAT is. So NAT is Network Address Translation. And it is a way to preserve IP version 4 we're talking about IP version 4 addresses. NAT is typically not used in IP version 6 because of the way the addressing works. Um, but NAT, what it, in its most rudimentary uh, deployment, you take a single public, so a non-RFC. So if you go back to some of my videos, you know the 10. Dot, uh, addresses the 192.168s and the 172.16s through 172.31 addresses that are used on the inside of our network. It takes those addresses, or if you have public addresses, you can still do this, but it goes to a single, this is the most rudimentary, a single public IP address on your WAN interface. And we are, when the packets come in from that local network, we are translating at, at the firewall I know, at the router to, so the router, let's use the, the term router. So we're translating all of these addresses on the back end of the network. They're coming in, they go out to the internet. We're translating it to the WAN address on the router. So you can have however many computers or devices behind the router however many it can handle, whatever its hardware capabilities are, can NAT to that single IP address. Now, there are some variations on NAT. So there is the one-to-many, there's one-to-one, -one where we have multiple WAN IP addresses on our router, and we're translating each of those to a single internal IP address, right? You've seen it. If you go back to the channel, you'll see where we do one-to-one -one IP addressing. So you've got the many to one, the one to one, then you've got just port address translation where you're basically just doing port forwarding through the, the router and the firewall. And uh, then you've got source NAT, you've got destination NAT, and then each vendor is going to talk a little bit. There, a lot of the vendors will throw some of their own vernacular in there just to, you know, because that's what vendors do, right? And then you also have um, hairpin NAT. And what hairpin NAT is, is, or NAT reflection, is it allows, you've got your, your device back here, and let's say you forwarded port 80 through, right? So when you resolve the website, or port 443, when you resolve the website, it resolves to the WAN IP address on the router. So what it's going to do is the machines back here are going to travel through the firewall and then back right through the WAN interface. So it looks like a hairpin turn, right? Or NAT reflection. So there's all kinds of things to do with that. NAT, like it, it is a, in its basic form, is a way to preserve and hide your internal IP addresses behind one or more WAN IP addresses on your router. NAT does not, so why is NAT not a firewall? Well, NAT doesn't care about the traffic. It, all it cares about is translating it and allowing the traffic to get out through the WAN. So the firewall that's on your router is going to pay attention to states. It's going to pay attention to source addresses, destination ports, patterns, whatever type of firewall you have, right? Whether it's... Um, a Cisco, a Ubiquiti, a Grandstream, a Palo Alto, right? Those those different firewalls, no matter the manufacturer, they're going to look at states or they're going to look at patterns and things like that. And they're going to block traffic or stop traffic. They're going to do things like not allowing traffic into the firewall that wasn't requested from inside the firewall, 
right? They're not just going to allow any unrelated or invalid whoop, states through the firewall. That's what I get for talking with my hands this morning. So the firewall is actually going to manipulate the packets to look at the source, the destination, the ports, things like that, and actually stop traffic or allow traffic. NAT doesn't care about any of that. NAT's just going to translate it to a WAN address or a port and let it right on through. So that's oftentimes why firewalls and NAT have to work together because in order for the uh, traffic to be NATed, it has to be allowed in the firewall. So you've got some some overlap from the firewall side, but NAT is not a firewall. NAT will not protect you. It will shield your IP addresses. Like I said, uh, now even though let's let's clear this up. I also did a a video a while back about why you should only use IP addresses that you own because equipment is designed to understand what those RFC addresses are, right? The, the 192, 168s, the 10 dots, the 172.16s. It is meant to know that that can't be routed over the public internet. At the same time, if you use a block of addresses that somebody actually owns on the inside of your router, you can inadvertently cause you problems if you're doing BGP and you're putting the routes out there. You could cause all kinds of weird issues. So you should only use IP addresses that you own or you should use RFC addresses and use NAT. So I hope that kind of clears this up because we are going to be doing some NAT videos with Grandstream. We're going to be doing some NAT videos with Ubiquity. So I hope that clears that up. If you've got questions about it, uh, if I made it as, as clear as mud, let me know down in the comments. And either way, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe, comment, and share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, head on over to willyhow.com. Fill out the contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. And don't forget to head on over to community.willyhow.com. Join the community. Come on over. Join the, the conversation. Share your expertise. Ask your questions. Once again, NAT is not a firewall. A firewall is not NAT. We just happen to have all of these services happening on the same box or router, right? So you've got a router, you've got NAT happening, you've got firewalling happening, and, and, and we've converged these all into a single piece of hardware. But NAT is definitely not a firewall. So if you've got any questions or need clarification, let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, I'm Willie, and I'll see you in the next video.